issues raised in the acquittal of uh, Senate President uh, Saraki, where we have in the studio a lawyer, Justice Chineme Uhwebu. Good morning and thanks for joining us Good on morning. TVC it is Breakfast. My pleasure once more. Now, in uh, making its claim, the, the federal government says that the onus laid on uh, Senate President that there was no infraction in the form uh, that he filled in the declaration of assets. Did the onus really lie on him? Actually, in criminal matters, mm -hmm. there is, a, there is a, at a point where the onus of proof will yeah. not shift to the defendant. To the defendant. You understand it? And that is actually what they are trying to say here. But even at that, I think if you look at the whole scenario here, it is just a case of uh, the prosecution not doing its homework yeah. very well. According to the CCC? Yes, according to the law. Not even CTC okay. is, a, is, is an establishment set out by the Constitution. In fact, it's an arm of judiciary. It's mm -hmm. a judiciary arm of the Code of Conduct, uh, your yeah. So, and um, it goes a long way to tell Nigerians when cases go to court, even in regular courts, and judgments or rulings are given, people come out and start talking in the No, you were not there. There are principles of law that the law must follow. In simplicity, once you're facing a criminal charge or allegation, the onus is on the prosecution. But to according prove. to the appeal, in part, what they read in the, let me try and see, uh, mm. in provision of paragraph 11, subsection 2, 3, and 31 of part one, fifth schedule of the 1999 constitution, that when these issues like this comes up in, in terms of asset declaration, if it is found that the civil servant leaves or have acquired things beyond, beyond his, his uh, means, means, really, yeah. that it, 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 it is now the body belongs to uh, the, 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 the civil servant to prove that, okay, these things I've gotten, they're not fraud, fraud, fraudulent to gotten, these things I've gotten with my own money, that's what the uh, appeal is saying in part. Yes. In the first place, the prosecution on its own part, did they rely its argument on this particular section? Mm -hmm. You see, some of these things are technical. Despite the fact that they are not technical, they are simple facts you can adduce. It's just for somebody who is supposed to be facing a charge of murder, and you are not taking him to court for a charge of stealing. The court is not a Father Christmas to give you what you do not ask. The court is bound to look at what is on the table. And apart from that, I'm not holding brief for anybody. This is a young man that has been in government for years. Mm. So if by way or any way he can prove that, well, I have, I have this money, or I have all these properties before now, before he became Senate president. Remember, the question we should be asking ourselves is this. Was he facing trial for the creation as, as at when he became Senate president or a senator or as and when he became governor no, for the no. first time? These are the issues we are mixing here. Could they have afforded those things easily it, it, as a then, government before that time? So on, on what grounds are you prosecuting him? Is it ab initio, the first time he entered government? What was his status before he became a government official as a governor or what? Then transmit it from that period to now. How many years has So gone? what you're saying, in, in other words, supports what the CCT chairman, Dan Ladi Umar, Yes, yes, that yes. The, the prosecution's work was totally wishy-washy. Yes, and again, and apart was from, not ap thorough. And again, apart from that, you mm. see, when you do not do your homework very well, you are bound to fail in the court. Because when you bring up a charge, or a purported charge against somebody, mm. look at one of the reasons. If, in fact, in no case submission, mm. there are principles. Yeah. And one of the principles which the, 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 the yep. chairman of the CCT said, mm -hmm. he said that the prosecution has not been able to link the accused person yeah. mm -hmm. to the alleged crime, crime or offense. And that is one of the major key principles of no case submission. You must link the accused person to the purported crime. It's, it's not a vague something. And the witnesses, all four of them, were I, I, not I'm reliable. I'm coming there. And again, one of the principles is that we are the evidence given by the prosecution that is the witness, yeah. have been watered down that no, no reasonable tribunal or court mm. can rely on that. Mm. Look at what he says. He said there are a lot of inconsistencies. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't there be inconsistencies? When you brought up a charge, you amended the charge up to five times mm. within the, the course of trial, trial within how on? many months? Okay, but the, the appeal is also <laughs> claiming that, okay, because if you, the ruling also says, Danadi also mentioned that, okay, um, Saraki should have been invited. 
mm -hmm. enter defense in this case. But uh, uh, appeal is saying, okay, then you will be overriding uh, the decision of the Court of Appeal saying there's no need to invite Saraki. So who is contravening who? No, no, no. The, the, you see, remember that that one was like, well, they were trying to say which the National Assembly has tried to amend mm -hmm. that section now. Yes. That before you charge somebody for uh, an alleged crime of, of uh, 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 false asset declaration, you first of all write him a letter inviting him to come and explain. That is what we call the other places uh, pre action notice. Mm -hmm. Do you understand it? But now, in as much as that one has not been done, but the issue there is this. They said they invited him. No, no. That it, they have in writing a statement, a written statement from uh, it, the civil it, president, as, as, as a, included in their evidence presented as, as to at the that time, As at that time, it has not become the law. So mm. if they decide to write to him, it's a privilege. Okay. I don't know whether you understand me. Yes. So, but if it's a condition precedent for you mm. to take that person, it's, it is, it is a, a criminal matter, it's not a civil matter. If it's a conjunct president, no problem. But what we are trying to say is this. If the Court of Appeal had given that ruling, that no, you don't need to invite him. If you feel he has uh, committed any alleged offense, take him to court. So what that means, the implicit, uh, the law, the criminal procedure of the, the law must be followed. And I think that is what... Okay, now you have this um, 11 grounds being filed by the federal government uh, with all kinds of prayers, including, uh, first of all, that uh, uh, the... the uh, hold on, let me uh, bring it out now. The, the two prayers by the FG seeking a setting aside of the CCT ruling and another uh, calling upon Saraki to enter his defense. Uh, defense. Yeah, you know, there are two things here. Yeah. At times, the court can, once the court rules, upholds your submission for no case submission. That mm -hmm. means, as simplicity, you're free of the crime. Mm -hmm. Now, discharged and, and acquitted. acquitted. Yes. But once the court says no, does not mean you're guilty. What the court is saying, there is enough allegation or evidence for you to enter a defense. Mm -hmm. Defend the matter. Yes. It's just like when uh, matters are referred or cases are referred to DPP for advice. Mm -hmm. DPP may come out with an advice, say maybe somebody is charged for murder and is sent to DPP. DPP may come out and say, well, from what you have studied in the file, this person is not supposed to face trial for murder but manslaughter. Mm -hmm. Or this person is supposed to uh, face trial for murder. Then go and start the matter de novo in a high court. Okay, now, the, the federal government says mm -hmm. the um, ruling was unreasonable. What well, would have been reasonable in this case? You know what? You see, I used to tell people that reasonability is subjective. What is reasonable to you may not be reasonable to me. Because the, 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 the court itself, the tribunal itself, has, is, the judgment is based... Let me tell, let me let us get something clear. Yeah. In civil matters, judgments most times are delivered on the opinion of the adjudicator. That is the judge. The judge. That's why they will tell you, by my own opinion, I arrive at this conclusion. But the opinion but criminal, is subject no, 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 no. to what it's, the it's law not says, isn't it's not, it? In criminal matters, mm -hmm. you must follow the law. Yeah. You must follow the principle. And that is why he met down the three principles of no case submission. One, by saying that he has not been linked mm -hmm. to the purported offense. But the appeal offense. also said, Danladi erred in discharging the case. I mean, in acquitting uh, the Senate president, mm -hmm. then according to the criminal, just been a yeah, the criminal uh, Justice Act, uh, Section uh, 302, 303, in case of no submission uh, uh, cases, all you can do is discharge and not acquit. Well, so it, who, who, who it, it, you see, let me tell you, that is why before, because the matter is still uh, subject to litigation, yes. there is a limit to what we can say, because we may be preempting okay, the, the judgment okay. of the, the court of appeal. You know what, at this point, let's okay. uh, bring in Foladele at this point. Uh, Foladele has been waiting in the wings. Yes, what are the people saying oh, about this one? Let's find out, let's find <laughs> out. <laughs> Rashid Adibwe said... That's the least Nigerian government must do now, at least to sustain public's confidence in its fight against corruption. Hashtag mm. Saraki Gate. <laughs> Dominic Omine Tim says, court cleared him on other charges brought against him. What will make this different? Octopus says, who is fooling who here? We all know nothing will come out of it. Mm. Mm. 
lots of people are actually skeptical online. Um, Harun Adila just says, another waste of time and resources. Uh. Mm. S. Johnson says, FG appeals Saraki CCT case. Is this not another goose chase? Mm. Olale Ola Steven says, we already know the appeal is a charade. The fight against corruption is dead because there is a strong conniver between the three arms of government making it so justice. Mm. People are very skeptical about how well this um, you know, appeal is going to go. Do you think nothing good can come out of it like someone is saying? Well, uh, if you look at, if you have followed the proceedings, or some of us that have followed the proceedings, we are all looking at what the courts or what the tribunal will come out with. But I have to tell you, I have to tell you honestly that the prosecution did not do its job properly. Mm. Some people had even argued or had even alleged that uh, there is a political undertone, uh, undertone to mm -hmm. it, or yeah. there is this, or there is that. But that becomes immaterial. Even if there's a political undertone, or some people are even trying to thwart the cause of justice, did the prosecution do what it was supposed to do? Big question. Mm. When you bring a matter, and you have done everything you're supposed to do and prove your case, the only thing the judge, his hands will be tight. Because you look at the law, mm. you're not looking at the facts. So all those 40 documentary evidence presented mm. to, uh, to the to city how, were to just... Extent, uh, to how extent those documents mm. goes to the issue of his case. Okay. That is the issue. So it's, it's not, not how many, it's not how many there. No, 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 it's not, it's not how many. In as much as the Supreme Court has ruled that any document provided is relevant to the fact in issue must be admissible the only thing now is the weight of that document to the matter mm. now so when somebody like um Isha sage says uh, that uh, the attorney general is not necessarily on the same page with the president uh, on this anti-corruption war mm. th this particular saraki gate is already causing some kind of uh, ripples at that level they are saying that this is a liability offense Make us understand it. <laughs> you see, in this scenario now, uh, people had come to say so many things, especially people in government. Yes. In fact, somebody said, tweeted yesterday, he said, well, that when they were, we were small, we were taught to not to talk while eating. Okay. That's why you see all this happening now is that they are all eating, so nobody is talking. Okay. You understand it? So what I'm trying to say here now is this. It's just because that it borders on judiciary. And let me tell you, if we are proactive in what we're doing, if the judges are incorruptible, it doesn't matter who is involved. Okay. Discharge your duties the way it should be. And that is why if you look at the, the symbol of justice mm -hmm. that we all know, is blindfolded with a knife and a scale. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't know you. It doesn't know you as a mother or as a father. What he knows is the quantum of and the, the quantum of evidence. Yes. That is why you see the scale. Yeah. That's in an ideal world. Yeah, that because is, that, you that said is why you see the judges are incorruptible. Yeah, that is why you mm -hmm. see the scale. Mm -hmm. The scale there, you, you know, the scale has two layers. Yes. So one A and B. Mm -hmm. The federal government here now is A. Mm -hmm. Saraki is B. Mm -hmm. So when federal government is bringing his own evidence, he is putting it there. Mm -hmm. And Saraki is bringing his own evidence, he is putting it there. So wherever at the end of the the whole scenario Where wherever the thing scales more he will right. now use his sledge uh, huh. knife and he doesn't know you so and let it's, nobody it's also interesting to note that the cct answers to the presidency the, the mandate of the cct derives from the president to an extent according to the constitution the president decides who is the judge the, the president sees to the appointment of the cct mm -hmm. so how really detached is the cct from mm -hmm. the presidency when it comes to issues like I, this? i love that that mm -hmm. goes to the issue of do we actually have total independence of the judiciary yeah it's a million dollar question. I keep on saying this. Can you answer that question? I, I know. I said no. From the beginning, I've said no. You know why? Because if the president still have hand in appointing the CCT chairman, the Supreme Court judges, and all the rest, how do you expect to be a free and fair dispensation of justice in a system like that? Mm -hmm. Where the president can pick up his phone and call the uh, 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 Court of Appeal chairman, I have interest in this matter. So, but that is not the issue. The issue is that we should be looking at is mm -hmm. this. The moment you are appointed to any honorable position like that, you are supposed to live above board. And that is why we are, the, the Western world, they are different from us. Till today, we are still playing party politics. The country is not going anywhere. But the moment you are elected outside this country, okay. you now know that your first constituency is the people. Mm. All right, uh, Fola. And <laughs> the people say <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> We the people. And well, on, on that note, uh, we'll have to 
leave it there. Thank you so much, Justice Uwebu. Uh, hope you'll come back next time to do justice to even more <laughs> issues. It is my pleasure. Anytime. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much.